Jaden and the Magic Bag Jaden, a poor boy, went to the forest to cut wood. He had an axe and two loaves of bread. He met a beggar in a ragged shirt who asked, May I have some food? Jaden gave the beggar a loaf of bread. Thank you, said the beggar. Then he gave Jaden a magic bag. Just say, grow coins, and it will give you money. Jaden ran back to his cottage. He put the bag on the table and said, grow coins. Instantly, a hundred gold coins spilled out onto the floor. Jaden's neighbor saw this from his yard. The neighbor crawled through Jaden's window and stole the bag. He said, grow coins, but the bag only made grass and straw. He began to cry. Jaden found the neighbor crying. Don't worry, I will share my gold with you, he said. The neighbor was sorry, but happy. I love being the classroom assistant. I help my friends to queue up. I help my teacher to clean the board. I help my friends to clean the table after lunch. They can have some of my food, too. I help my teacher to give paper and crayons in art class. I help to collect everyone's drawings, too. I help the coach to collect the balls in PE class. In music class, I play the piano for my classmates to sing. I help to turn off the lights before leaving the class. Being the classroom assistant is so fun! Alex was excited because it was spring break, and he had a whole week off from school. His parents were taking him to a cabin in the woods. When they arrived at the cabin, Alex jumped out of the car and ran inside. It had everything they needed for their vacation, except for one thing. Mom! cried Alex. Where's the TV? The cabin doesn't have one, she answered. Alex was shocked. How would he watch his shows? Thank goodness he had his little game machine. He quickly tried to switch it on, but the batteries were dead. What a disaster, he cried. What am I supposed to do? Go outside and play, said his dad. How can I play? My game machine is dead. Alex cried. Just go outside and try, grinned his dad. So Alex went outside, but there was nothing to do there. No TVs and no game machines, just a lot of trees. It was so boring. Finally, Alex became so bored, he picked up a stick and poked it at the ground. He looked at his shadow and noticed that the stick in his hand looked like a sword. He moved his sword stick around and his shadow did the same. He imagined he was a pirate. He started sword fighting with the trees and bushes around him. Then he hopped on top of a boulder. Little Alex pretended he was standing on top of his castle. He raised his sword high and shouted to the imaginary knights, You'll never get in. This is my tower, he said aloud. From here, I can see all of my kingdom. For hours, Alex played in the forest. Having many great adventures, he was not bored at all. He did not need a TV or game machine. All he needed was his imagination. In the next morning, Alex's dad returned from the store with some fresh batteries for the game machine. Thank you, Dad, said Alex. But now I have things to do outside. And for the rest of the week, he had the most fun of his life. Every week, Ming helps around the house. He takes out the garbage. He sweeps the steps. He walks the dogs. And then, every Friday, his parents give him money for all his hard work. On Saturdays, 
Ming uses some of his money to go to the cinema. On Sundays, he always buys ice cream and a comic book. But on Monday, he has no money left and must work again to get more. One day, Ming saw an airplane at the toy store. It is beautiful, with shiny wings and a real engine sound. I will buy that plane this weekend, he said, then rushed home to do his work. Ming worked hard all week, and on Friday, he got his money. As usual, Saturday, he saw a new movie, and on Sunday, he bought an ice cream and a new comic book. On Monday, he had no money left and no new airplane. Ming's dad saw that he was unhappy. What's wrong, son? His dad asks. Ming frowned and said, I want to buy a new airplane, but I have no money. Dad patted his head. I know how you can get that plane. Dad gives Ming an empty jar. You need to save your money, he says. Every week, put a little in this jar. And soon, you will have enough to buy that plane. Oh, thanks, Dad, smiles Ming. That Friday, Ming got his money as usual. On Saturday, he went to the cinema, but on Sunday, he did not buy a comic book. On Monday, he is surprised. He has a little money to put into the jar. The next weekend, Ming did not go to the cinema on Saturday. On Sunday, he bought an ice cream and a comic book. But on Monday, he still had some money to put in the jar. The money is beginning to grow. Another week passes. This time, Ming does not buy ice cream. And on Monday, he has even more money in the jar. It is enough to buy the airplane. Saving money is smart, he says as he plays with his shiny new toy. Beauty and the Beast One day, a father wanted to bring his daughter, Beauty, some roses because she was a good girl. On his way home, he passed a big castle with a lovely rose garden. He cut some roses for Beauty. Then an ugly and angry beast came out of the gate and said, You took my roses! Now you must give me your daughter! At home, the father told Beauty what happened. I will go to the beast's castle, she said. I don't want him to harm you. The father cried many tears when Beauty left. Beauty lived with the beast in his castle. The beast was kind to her, and she read books to him. When Beauty went to visit her father, the beast became sick from missing her. Beauty found the beast weak in bed. She cried for him, and her tears fell on his cheeks. Suddenly, the beast became a handsome prince. Soon, they married in the rose garden. Hi, my name is Archie, and I am six years old. This is my brother, Paul. Paul is eight. Paul is older than me, so I call him my big brother. I am younger than Paul, so I am his little brother. It is great to have a big brother. I am never lonely. Even when there are no friends around, I can always play with him. He teaches me a lot of fun games that we can play together. My big brother is strong and brave. He always protects me from angry dogs or bullies. He would never let anyone or anything hurt me. I am never afraid when my big brother is by my side. My big brother is smart, too. He is in the third grade already. He always helps me with my homework. 
Once I don't know anything like math or spelling, I can ask him. He is always patient with me. Sometimes, Paul wants to play with his own friends. They are all older, like he is. But Paul always lets me come along and join in the fun. He doesn't mind having his little brother around. My big brother is my best friend. When I am sad, he makes me smile. When I am scared, he makes me brave. He tells me his secrets and shares everything he has with me. I know he will always be there for me. My friend Danny does not have a big brother. He has a big sister. I wonder if a big sister is as good as a big brother. He says it is the same. What do you think? Maybe someday mom and dad will have another baby. Then I can be a big brother too. I hope that I can be as good of a big brother as Paul is to me. Once there was a cat called Crooks. She was a lovely orange cat with white paws. She meowed as sweetly as any cat. Her eyes were as green as grass. She was a perfectly fine cat. But Crooks was a little different. Where other cats had long, fluffy tails, she had a short, crooked tail. That was why everyone called her Crooks. Crooks was very shy about her tail. Whenever another cat passed by, she would sit on it so that no one could see. The other cats sometimes laughed at her when they saw her crooked little tail. One day, the gray Persian cat had a birthday and invited all the cats to his party. Somehow, even Crooks was invited. But Crooks was not happy. She was so worried about her tail. Then, Crooks had an idea. She went to the river and found some long cattails growing by the water. She snipped one off and tied it to her own tail. Now she had a long, fluffy tail like the others. Crooks hurried to the party to show off her new tail. She walked up and down in front of the others, waving her fake tail as best as she could. Behind their paws, the other cats whispered about her. Crooks did not know they were still making fun of her. She raised her fake tail and waved it so strongly that it became untied and fell to the floor. All the cats laughed and pointed at her crooked tail. But the Persian cat did not laugh. Tss, he hissed at the others. You should not laugh at her. Her tail is different, but that just means she is more special than all of us. I wish my tail was special. The other cats were ashamed of themselves. The Persian cat invited Crooks to sit next to him, and they shared some cake. Now, Crooks felt special and was no longer shy about her very special tail. Once there was a boy named Bob who was an only child and very proud of himself. He shouted at his father and ordered his mother to do things. He acted like a bad little prince. At school, Bob did not obey his teachers. On the playground, he told other children what to play and never shared his own toys. He had no respect for anyone except himself. I will not share my toys. On his birthday, 
Bob got many presents from his parents and grandparents, but not the one he really wanted. A bicycle. Where is my bicycle? He shouted. You should have given me a bicycle. Happy birthday. I don't need it. I want a new bicycle. Angry, he went to the pond outside. In the middle of the pond was a small mountain with a porcelain palace. There was a little prince in front of that palace. I wish I lived in that palace, Bob cried. Then I would have everything I wanted, and everyone would have to do what I say. It would be great if I were the prince living in that palace. I will have everything I want. The god of the mountain heard Bop's wish, and poof, he disappeared. Suddenly, Bop was in front of the palace. He had become very small. At last, he sang, "I am the true prince." He wanted to run into the palace, but something was wrong. I am a true prince now. Bob could not move. His legs were hard and frozen. His whole body was frozen and all one piece. He had turned to porcelain. <laughs> I can't move. You got what you wished for. Said the mountain god. The god said, "You are too proud and show no respect for anyone. Now you can live here forever, as hard and cold as your heart." Bob felt very sorry for himself and wanted to cry, but could not. You got what you wished for. Why do you look so sad? But Bob's heart was not cold and hard; it was still soft and warm. He was truly sorry for his disrespect to others, and in his heart, he promised to do better if only he could return to his family. I don't want to be the prince anymore. I want to be home. The god could see into Bob's heart and knew that he had changed. So. He waved his hand, and Bob became a little boy once more. Bob ran to his parents and hugged them. From then on, he respected everyone and got love in return. I am back. Do you learn the lesson of respect? Yes, I do. Thank you so. A very long time ago, in Greece. There was a king named Midas. Like all kings, Midas was very rich. He had lots of land, a big palace, and rooms full of gold. But he was greedy and always wanted more. I want more and more gold, land, and palaces. <laughs> One day. Midas was in his forest hunting deer. He came upon a beautiful young deer and drew back his great bow to shoot it with an arrow. Please don't shoot," said the deer, much to his surprise. "Such a great deer! It will belong to me." "Please don't shoot." "I am the son of the forest god." Continued the deer, "If you let me live, my father will give you anything you want." So King Midas took the deer back to his father, who lived in a large cave. Oh, my son, Dad, I am home. For sparing my son's life, I will give you one wish," said the god. Midas thought a while and said, "I wish everything I touch will turn to gold." The god frowned at the wish 
but said, "Granted." Granted. My wish came true. <laughs> Midas hurried back to his palace to see if his wish came true. First, he touched a stone. It turned to solid gold. Ha <laughs> ha! Laughed Midas. Ha <laughs> ha! I will be the richest king in the world. I will be the richest king of all kings in the world. Ha 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 ha! Then he ran to his garden and touched all the roses. They all turned to delicate gold, but they no longer smelled lovely. Midas's daughter ran to her father and cried, "Oh, the poor roses!" Ha 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 ha! Don't worry, my darling. We will be even richer. <laughs> That's my fault, my poor daughter. I wish I had never made that wish. The forest god heard his words and said, "Granted." Suddenly, the stone and the roses turned back into what they were before. The king's daughter also turned back into a living girl. Midas was so relieved he hugged her close and said, "I will never be greedy again." Granted. Oh, my dear daughter, you're back. I'm so sorry. I will never be greedy again. Jake the snake and Nat the cat played by a blue lake on a sunny day. They had kites that were flying up high in the sky. With a net, they chased yellow bugs. They went over a bridge on a bike. Nat said, "We could make paper boats to sail on the lake." It would be fun to play with paper boats," said Jake. A big wind blew, and the paper boats sailed away. The wind puffed again, and soon the boats sailed out of sight. Where did they go? Yelled Nat as she looked at the lake. Jake and Nat made eight new boats with some beige papers and some red paint. These red boats will stay on the lake and not blow away," said Jake. But a big wind blew, and those eight paper boats sailed away too. The wind puffed again, and soon they sailed out of sight. Where did they go this time? Yelled Jake as he looked up and down the lake. Look, someone is swimming on the lake over there," said Nat. Jake and Nat glimpsed brown feet and a yellow tail diving into the lake. It was a baby duck. The baby duck went into the tall reeds at the edge of the lake. Jake and Nat walked over to the reeds that grew on the edge of the lake by mud and clay. The baby duck was swimming in the reeds, and all of Jake and Nat's paper boats were there too. The baby duck tapped the paper boats with her brown beak. You are playing with our paper boats, but we don't mind," said Nat. All of us can play. Thank you," said the baby duck. Jake, Nat, and the baby duck played all day with the paper boats. A soft wind blew, and the boats sailed up and down the lake. While they all watched the boats on that sunny day, they sat by the lake eating acorns and apricots. It is fun to float boats while we eat acorns and apricots," said the baby duck. 
how zebras got their stripes. Once there was a greedy ape who thought he owned the stream. One day after another, different animals drank water from the stream and they all got yelled at by the ape. Go away, this stream is mine. But one morning, a zebra went to the stream to drink water and got yelled at by the ape. Get out of here, this stream is mine. But the zebra replied, it is not your stream and kept drinking from the stream. The ape got angry and made a fire to chase the zebra away. The zebra stamped out the fire and got burned from the logs from the fire. The ape was afraid. The ape promised never to be greedy again. And from then on, the zebra had stripes. Coronavirus is very dangerous. It can cause cough, fever, and pneumonia. Coronavirus is so tiny that it cannot be seen, but its infection rates are very serious. When a patient sneezes or coughs, the coronavirus spreads and infects others. Coronavirus can latch onto every single place, like eyes, noses, and mouths, especially if someone is lazy to wash their hands. Coronavirus can hide in our body up to 14 days before it makes us cough, get a fever, or feel any of the other symptoms. Without prompt treatment, pneumonia will get worse and could cause a patient to die. Our best defense against the coronavirus is to use soap, disinfectants, and everyone working together to prevent the virus from spreading. We shouldn't worry too much about the virus, as long as we do our part, like avoiding crowded places as much as possible, and always wearing face masks. This will help to prevent spreading infections. Be honest and fill out medical declaration forms timely. Save oneself and protect other beloved ones. Ho oh, the doe looked at the paper. She read out loud, are you our next star baker? Come to the field on the edge of town. Ho jumped for joy and said, I would like to be the next star baker. What will I bake? Glenn the goat walked in and looked at the paper. We should bake some food and go to the field, he said. Ho and Glenn walked to the shop at the end of the road. I don't know yet what I would like to bake, said Poe as she pushed a trolley. And I don't know yet, said Glenn. They walked by some prunes, and Poe said, I would not like to bake with those prunes. No, I don't like them, said Glenn. They walked by some apricots, and Poe said, I think I will put these apricots in the trolley. Then they walked by some acorns, and Glenn said, I think I will get these acorns. Poe was the first to bake. She said, I am going to make an apricot pie. It is so yummy, and I know I will be the star baker. Poe cut and boiled the fruit. She put beige paper in a pan and said, Time for my apricot pie to bake. When her pie was hot, she looked at it and said, Oh no, my pie is a bit black. Po put her pie into a box and said, But I know I will win. Glenn was next to bake. He said, I am going to make some acorn cookies. They are so yummy. And I know I will be the star baker. Glenn chopped acorns and roasted them. He put beige paper on a pan and said, Time for these cookies to bake. When his cookies were hot, he looked at them and said, Oh no, my cookies are a bit black. Glenn put them in a box and said, But I know I will win. Poe and Glenn walked to the field on the edge of town. A big white tent was on the field. 
Nat the cat, Dan the dog, Sam the ram, and Pam the pig were there. All of them had boxes of baked food. Who would be the star baker? Nat had baked a ginger cake. Dan had baked lime muffins. Sam had baked cream puffs. Pam had baked jam tarts. Huff the puffin and Fred the frog walked by the food. They would pick the star baker. They took a bite of all the food. Huff and Fred walked to the edge of the crowd. All of the food was yummy, and we could not pick one star baker," said Huff. "We have picked six star bakers," said Fred. "Nat, Dan, Sam, Pam, Poe, and Glenn are our star bakers today," said Fred. All of them danced for joy. The next day. All six of them were in the paper. Look at us," said Poe to Glenn. "We are all star bakers." A woodcarver, Geppetto, loved to make puppets. When he had just awoken, a puppet appeared in front of the woodcarver and said that a fairy gave him a life to be his son. Geppetto was very happy and named the puppet. Pinocchio. One day, Geppetto asked Pinocchio to go buy some food. On the way to the market, a sly fox and a sly cat tricked Pinocchio and stole his money. But Pinocchio did not know that. When he took money to pay for the vegetables, there was nothing in his pocket. He said what happened along the way to the cellar. He gave him a debit note to take home and said his father could pay later. Coming home, Pinocchio told a lie to Geppetto, and his nose grew a little. After that, Geppetto found the debit note in his jacket. Geppetto asked, but Pinocchio still told a lie, so his nose grew even longer. The fairy appeared and said, "If he told a lie again." His nose would be much longer. Afraid, Pinocchio told all things to his father, and his nose was back to being short. From then on, he never told a lie again. Una, the unicorn, was on a ship in June. She sat down on a sunbed and said, "The sky is blue, and I like sunshine." Rony the pony sat down on the sunbed next to her and said, "I like sunshine too." A crew member walked by them. It was Tim the tiger. He said, "Oh, what will I do? The cook is sick, and no one can cook any stew." Una said to Tim, "I know how to cook stew. I could cook for you." I could cook for you too," said Rony. Tim was happy. Una the unicorn put on a blue uniform. Rony the pony put on a blue uniform as well. What will we put in the stew? said Una. They looked in the fridge and picked up some prunes, blue fruit, leeks, and beets. Una and Rony. Cooked many huge pots of stew. They put the pots of stew in the fridge and on the cooker. But soon they ran out of room. Tim walked in and said, "Quick, I need to take five plates of beet stew to the dining room." Una put five plates on a tray and handed it to him. Tim walked in again and said, "Quick." Now I need to take nine plates of leek stew to the dining room. Oh, so many plates of stew! Said Rony. Tim walked in again and said, "Quick! Now I need to take ten plates of prune stew to the dining room." Oh, so many plates of stew! Said Una. Una and Rony cooked so many kinds of stew. 
and there was food all over the room. Food was in the fridge and on the cooker, and soon it fell on the ground. Oh no! Shrieked Una. We are making a huge mess. The cook walked in and said, "What a huge mess!" Thank you for making many pots of stew," he said to Una and Roni. "I am well again, and now you can go and rest." Una took off her blue uniform, and Roni took off hers. It is not fun to cook so many pots of stew," said Una. "No, we will not cook so many pots of stew again," said Roni. The ship stopped at a port. The sky was blue, and the sun was shining. A huge sand dune was on the beach. Una the unicorn and Roni the pony sat on the dune and sighed. They napped for the rest of the day. Jane the sheep was going to make some pots of jelly. Neil the seal wanted to help him and said. I can pick some food from the field to put into the jelly. Neil took a bag and went to a field by the road where there were lots of trees. He could see a peach tree. It was a windy day, and the wind was blowing the peach tree. Neil picked some yellow peaches and said, "These will be good for Shane's jelly." Neil put the yellow peaches in his bag, and could feel an itch on his fin. The itch on his fin made him shriek for joy. His chubby belly was shaking like jelly. I don't know what is making me itch," said Neil. He looked in the bag, but could not see what made him itch. Neil took his bag. And went to a field of green parsley. The wind stopped blowing. He picked some parsley and said, "This green parsley will be good for Shane's jelly." Neil put the green parsley in his bag, and could feel an itch on his fin again. He looked in his bag, and could see something round and small looking at him. He could see Lee the bee. Why are you in my bag? said Neil to the happy bee. The wind blew me into your bag while you were picking peaches, said Lee the bee. You did not see me, so I ran up and down your fin. That's why I could feel an itch, said Neil. Can I help Shane make jelly? Said Lee. I think he would like your help. Said Neil. Neil and Lee helped Shane make many pots of peach jelly. Then they made many pots of parsley jelly. Thank you for your help. Said Shane to Neil and Lee. Neil put Lee the bee into his bag, and went back to the peach tree in the field. Lee the bee sat on a round peach in the tree and said, "It was fun to make jelly. Next time we can make some cookies and smoothies," said Neil.